today. This is kind of like a very practical and I'm hoping very empowering episode for you because we are going to be talking about a concept that if you're in the entrepreneurial world, you probably have heard this before, but to a lot of people that aren't, and maybe you're just more in the spiritual world, this concept might be new. And this is coming from actually someone who was considering uh, working with me and we've been kind of emailing back and forth and, you know, she is wanting to bring her spiritual gifts to the world. She's wanting to teach. She's wanting to host retreats and workshops. And she shared me one of her inspirations. She gets a newsletter from someone who's hosting something that she was like, wow, I would love to do something like this. And she sends me this newsletter and has this comment of, you know what, I'm not sure if, you know, the market is too flooded. And whenever I hear that, I just want to scream at the top of a building (laughs) because I get where it's coming from. We think that because we are in this world, we have such a limited view of how many people there are in this world. We, our minds can't actually grasp that because we only know a, a few hundred people or so. And, you know, our worlds are small and Yes, it is a small world and synchronicities happen and we make connections with people and how do we know each other and all that stuff. But on a larger scale, there is so many people in this world and so many people who have no idea about any of this work or that it could actually be really beneficial for them. I'm going to sidetrack here and tell a little story. I don't know if I shared this on the podcast yet, but I was giving a wellness workshop at a hospital. And during the workshop, I asked if anyone knew who Brene Brown is. Now, if you're listening to this, you probably know who Brene Brown is. And if not, I think you'll love Brene Brown if you're listening to this. Anyway, I asked this question and guess what? No one raises their hand. Now, for me, in my world, Brene Brown seems like the president. It's like, how could you not know this figure that is so prominent in what you might call self-development or wellness or just all the beautiful work she does on emotions? How could you not know who this person is? And it's a reminder to me when I'm in these spaces of, oh, this is a bubble. I live in a very spiritual wellness bubble. And there is so many people who don't have the space and just maybe it's not their path. And that's totally okay too. I'm not saying that we're better because we know these people by any means. If people are content and joyful, just living their day-to-day lives, doing their stuff without, you know, having to read books or look to people or or do self-work on themselves, then absolutely great, amazing. Now, I'm saying all this is to remind you that there is so many people out there who need what you have and you can be the introduction to them. You can be the balm when they need it, when they go through that divorce when they have that big transition and they're seeking, right? something happens in our life. And it might be when we're young. I, ha- I had it happen when I was fairly young in my 20s. And for some people, it happens during a divorce. For some people, it happens later on in life where there's a seeking. There's, there's a seeking for something else. And when they find something that calls to them, like they might find your workshop or your website, or your program, you are the introduction to helping them look at themselves and open their hearts and and do whatever work, connect them to their soul in the ways that they're yearning to be connected to. You are the introduction. And there are millions of people that are going to be in this transition soon. And you have the opportunity to be there for them in whatever way your gifts are. Maybe it's the book that you write. 
Maybe it's the workshop, the program, again, in whatever way that you offer that you have a chance. And so is it too flooded? Absolutely not. I think we need more people doing this work because we need more people connected to their soul and feeling that energy and being a light for the world. Like that's what's going to really make change. I firmly believe that. And so I want to introduce a concept today that has really helped me to constantly put things in perspective. Listen, I'll be completely honest. I have a vision to impact millions of people. And in some ways, because my meditations have been listened to millions of times, I've, I've done that, which feels insane. And so I, I do have this wider vision that I always have since I started. And, and you might not have that vision. I know a lot of people that don't have that type of vision, and that's okay too. But when we talk about how do we make a living doing this work, we 100% don't need millions of people to listen to our stuff or to come to our stuff. Um, not even close. Not even close. And there is an amazing article. It was written in like 2008 by a man named Kevin Kelly. Kevin Kelly is a, a futurist. He is a kind of a tech person, but he also spends time living with the Amish. He's just a really interesting, unique character. And he wrote this article and he talks about that if you are a solo creator, musician, artist, and I'm going to add in meditation teacher, coach, that you don't need millions of fans or followers. Actually, what you need is 1,000 true fans. And he defines a true fan as someone who will buy anything that you offer or will come to anything that you offer. They just, they love what you have to share with the world. And if a true fan will spend $100 a year on whatever you create. And he's talking sometimes about musicians, so maybe they'll buy a shirt, they'll buy a new album, they'll come to your show. But again, I want to use this concept here because you just might have a few meditations in the year. And if you have a thousand true fans that spend 20 bucks to come to your five meditations, then you have a $100,000 business. So it's super simple. It breaks it down in a very clear way of like, oh, I don't need to try to impact millions of people or thousands of people. I actually just need 1,000. 1,000 people who really love the work I do in a way that they would actually give just $100 to listen or learn from me. And so this concept brings us back to like, okay, well, if it's not a million, if it's just a thousand, then let's focus on, do I have one true fan? And maybe you do. And maybe this is your invitation. It's to like, okay, you know, I'm just getting started. Let me start putting myself out there. Let's see who the first true fan is. Because I promise you, they're probably there. And then we're like, okay, well, then how do I have two true fans and three true fans? And if a thousand seems like a lot, like, wow, yeah, that is a lot to, to have 10 times a hundred, right? That's all. That's probably a good amount of true fans that are going to spend me a hundred dollars um, a year for this to be a sustainable business, right? To be a, a really solid living if you're making a hundred thousand dollars a year um, in most places. Now, you might say, well, okay, then maybe it's 500 who spend $200 a year. Okay, well, what is that product? So you can just kind of keep just doing the math, right? Maybe you sell one-on-one -on -one coaching packages. Right? And so maybe you need 20 people to purchase $5,000 coaching packages if you're creating kind of a premium package that you're inviting people into. Oh, that's just 20 people. Okay, and just this is just basic math that helps us psychologically understand the possibilities of how we can make a living doing this work. We don't need to be Oprah. We don't need to write The Alchemist and 
you know, have it reach millions of people. Um, although I would love to to, to, to to write that and and have that breakout spiritual classic. We don't need to though. We just need a thousand true fans. And so I hope this gives you some energy to get going, to start thinking about, okay, who are your first true fans? Do you already know who they are? And are you even inviting them in? Is there an opportunity for them to spend that $100? Now, sometimes whenever there's my favorite musicians, when they, when they come to town or when they have an, when they invite, there's such a big thing in just learning how to ask. When the musicians that I love actually ask for a donation or to buy something, I am so excited to, 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 to bring that energy to them because they give so much to me in my life that it is absolutely like nothing to spend a hundred dollars for the support that I feel like some of my favorite musicians, what they give to me and my heart and my soul. And so if they don't ask though, we don't really just go out of our way to just like throw money at people. Sometimes like it's very generous and very beautiful when that happens. But this is the power of learning how to ask that when people see that there's a highway, that there's a bridge to extend their support and appreciation, they take that bridge. If they don't see the bridge, they're not going to walk through it. And you create the bridge by learning how to ask to extend. And this is also a practice in learning how to receive and actually open ourselves up that people actually want to give you their money. They want to support you because it's a way that they can a reciprocal uh, reciprocate what you are giving to them. And so learning how to ask, that could be a, we might do a whole nother podcast episode on that. And um, I think I have a new meditation. If you want to check out Insight Timer about learning how to receive, that's a side note, but a thousand true fans, where are they for you? May you go out and identify them, work to serve them, and then also open the door, open the bridge create a product, create an offering, create a workshop, invite them in and go from there and then get your second true fan and your third and your fourth. And that is how we build this brick by brick, drip by drip. The whole time you are doing your soul work and it is nourishing and fulfilling the entire time. I wish you so much support. Know that I am rooting for you and I send you so much love. Thanks for listening. If you're newer to this podcast, I have an amazing free offering that helps you script unique, guided, and powerful meditations. It's called Meditation Script Mastery. You can enroll for free at meditationcreators.thinkific.com or there will be a link right in the show notes below. I would love to support you in your creations if that's something that calls to you to create. And that's all I have for now, folks. Sending you blessings and love and I look forward to speaking with you again very soon. I'll beat my drum for you. I sing my song for you. I clap my hands to the beat that transforms into. I'll beat my drum for you. I sing my song for you. I clap my hands to the beat that transforms into. music you heard is a song called Nova by River Roots. Thank you so much for listening.